What's up everyone, Dabblade here with another Hunter's Guide to Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. In this video, I'm going to be bringing you the must-have spread bows in the game. Now what is a must-have weapon? Well, it's a weapon that is considered probably the best or most optimal ones to craft, as certain weapons within their weapon category definitely shine more than others. So we're not comparing, say, the Greatsword to the Sword and Shield, we are more comparing individual Greatswords found in the Greatsword category. But this video isn't about the Greatsword, this is about the bows. And in this case, spread bows. Now when it comes to the bows, in fact when it comes to some certain weapons as well, they can be subcategorized. With the bows, there'll be videos dedicated to piercing arrows, rapid arrows, and in the case of this video, spread arrows. Spread arrows are the shotgun-esque arrow type that allow you to deal massive damage akin to a shotgun blast but puts you at risk because you have to be close to a monster to get the maximum effect from them. But that being said, they are some of the most powerful in the game. And so I'd strongly recommend adding these to your arsenal. Now when it comes to these bows, I'm talking about the bows as if players are using the mighty bow decoration and thus have the bow charge plus skill in their builds. Thus giving us access to one of the most important aspects when it comes to the bows themselves and unlocking that final charge shot level. So first of all for the raw spread bow, you want to go for the Camellios bow known as the Devil's Consile. This is a bow that has a decent raw attack of 370, it doesn't have any element or affinity or defense bonus, it has decent decoration slots with a tier 2 rampage decoration slot. It also has access to the recovery arc shots, although in all honesty when it comes to the arc shots these are kind of a second thought when compared to the other aspects that the bow has. And most importantly, it also has access to the spread level 5 arrows, thanks to the charge shot being at level 4. This is by far the most useful raw attack spread bow if you're just focusing on a raw attack build. But the bow shines when it comes to elements. And so what should you be aiming for? Well, when it comes to the fire bow, you want to go for the raffian bow, known as the Queen's Rhapsody. This has an okay raw attack of 330 with a fire rating of 41. It has 0% affinity and defense bonus. It has decent decoration slots and a tier three rampage decoration slot as well. This is also useful when it comes to elemental bows as it allows us to implement the elemental bane rampage decoration without having to waste curious crafting on upgrading the rampage decoration slot. You'll also have the affinity arc shot and once again you'll have spread level 5 arrows thanks to the charge shot level being at 4. But the next element we're going to cover is water which I'd advise going for the daimyo tree or the daimyo hematol bow known as the chale war bow. This has a strong raw attack of 340 with a water rating of 23. It's slightly lower than I would normally like but still this is the best bow for the water element when it comes to spread arrows. You'll have 0% affinity with a 30 defense bonus. You'll also have access to the most amount of decoration slots available to a spread elemental bow. And once again, you'll have a tier three rampage decoration slot. You also have the brace arc shot. And once again, you'll have spread level five arrows at charge shot level four. Now, next up is thunder, to which I'd advise going for the Kezu bow, known as the Kezu KSS. This has a decent raw attack of 330 with a strong thunder rating of 42. You have 0% affinity and 0% defense bonus with a tier 3 decoration slot and a tier 3 rampage decoration slot. You'll have access to the recovery arc shots and once again you'll have spread level 5 arrows with your charge shot being at level 4. Now when it comes to the ice element there are two options when it comes to spread arrows. First of all I'd recommend the Velkana bow known as the Alluring Evela. This has a strong raw attack of 340 with an ice rating of 20. You have no affinity and defense bonus, but you have a decent decoration slot as well as a tier 3 rampage decoration slot. You have the recovery arc shots, and once again you have spread at level 5 arrows, thanks to the charge shot being at level 4. But alternatively, if you're going through the game and you don't have access to Velkana yet, I'd also recommend going for the Baryoff bow, known as the Amber Arc Velanga. This has a low raw attack of 300 and 10 with a decent ice rating of 28. You have a massive 30% base affinity with a zero defense boost. You have okay decoration slots and a tier two rampage decoration slot. You have the affinity arc shot and once again you'll have access to spread level five arrows as a result of the charge shot being at level four. And then finally for the dragon element you want to go for the Valstrax bow, the crimson plume. This has a low raw attack of 310 but a massive dragon rating of 48. You have no affinity and defense bonus. You have a tier two decoration slot and a tier two rampage decoration slot with the affinity arc shot. 
and once again you'll have the spread level 5 arrows when your charge shot is at level 4. But when it comes to the dragon element there are some alternatives. The main alternative being the gold raffian bow, the Selene Moonbroken. This has a massive raw attack of 350 with a dragon rating of 28. You have again no affinity and no defense bonus. You have a decent decoration slot and a tier 2 rampage decoration slot and access to the affinity arc shots. You again also have spread level 5 arrows when your charge shot is at level 4. Now the only time I'd really recommend taking the gold raffian bow over the Valstrax bow is when a monster is quite strong against the dragon element. I mean, yes, it can still be weak to dragon, but for example, if its elemental hit zones aren't particularly susceptible to dragon and raw attack may be better, the Gold Raffian bow may trump the Valstrax bow, but for the most part, the Valstrax bow is normally the better option to go for when you're looking for a dragon element bow. Now, finally, before we go, a quick Mimi bow. If you wanted to use a spread blast bow, you could also get away with using the Blood Orange Bishoten bow, known as the Six Glowing Oves. This has a decent raw attack of 340 with a blast rating of 16. You have no affinity and defense bonus. You have a tier 2 decoration slot and a tier 2 rampage decoration slot and access to the brace arc shots. You also have the spread level 5 arrows when your charge shot is at level 4. But for the most part when you're using spread bows you want to focus on elements first then raw attack then elements. If you were desperate to use elements, there are better bows out there, but they utilize the other arrow types, which will be explained in future videos. So there we have it. Those are the bows that I would recommend if you wanted to use the spread bow in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. A quick reminder as well, when talking about the arrow types, I normally categorize a bow as a spread, pierce or rapid bow according to whatever their level 3 and level 4 charge shots are. So that's just a heads up. But nonetheless, I hope you find this useful when you're expanding your arsenal. And until next time, I've been Dartblade, bringing you the must-have spread bows in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like for more.